All right guys, we're back with Mazda Monday and today we'll start the turbo series. So a lot of stuff I uh, wanna go over after the video, but I'm gonna keep it short and simple. So I'm pretty much just gonna let Lance take over where pretty much the video is down at Speedy Root Motorsports. Uh, they're pretty much a Japanese specialist. The main um, manufacturer they work with on the cars like for aftermarket parts is Subaru, but now they are really getting into Mazdas and starting to get custom parts in for Mazdas. And like I said, they are the US distributor for VT Superchargers. And you know, they are the only shop right now with a big turbo for the Ford Gen. So pretty much we're just gonna go head down there. I mean, I already recorded the video. Um, talk to Lance and then I kind of want to just give you an overview after the video of what's going on behind the scenes with the turbo and what do we have in store for the next few videos. All right guys, we're back at Speedy Roo. As you can tell, snowing out, but uh, that's what you go to a shop for so you can get tuning done and everything you need to when the weather isn't the greatest. Can't street tune at this time of the year. Guys, we're with Lance here. So he has the first big turbo fourth gen Mazda 3. So I'm gonna let him talk to you guys and explain you explain to you about his car because you know everyone thinks they know what the car is gonna do, but he's the one been here, him and his tuner Dan working on this. So I'm gonna let him go over his car and what he has done to it, and he can tell you what's gonna be happening in the future. So so as far as the car goes, guys, I've got the Burger Motorsport Stage 2 intake, which is a true cold air intake, which is 3 inches to 2 and a half. You've got an 80 millimeter catback exhaust from Cork Sport. I've got their downpipe. Of course, I've got their big brake kit. I've got their rear, the rear sway bar. I've got the spoiler. But performance wise up front, that's what I've got is intake, downpipe, exhaust. I do have their oil catch cam for Burger Motorsports because it goes from the valve body, not the valve body, scary, the valve cover. And then back into the turbo and that's where some of us are losing oil is just going back and forth there and i don't have oil loss anymore since i put that catch cam on um and of course i've got the pure 500 turbo on it now uh car's been on the on and off the dyno as you guys seen on facebook a while it has actually been solidly on the dyno now for a week we have made progress um the biggest thing we've been working with is consistency and runs because what we've been seeing is a good run followed by a bad run, but that's because we're hitting torque limit tables, we're hitting accelerator pedal tables, but we found all that. And yesterday we actually made two runs back to back consistently and we saw the power straight up. We didn't see any dips in anything and the power went straight up. So we're still working with that. I believe, and I'm not sure, but I believe we're gonna see 320 maybe, could be 310, we just don't know, but we'll be over 300 horsepower with this turbo which is going to take some time. The software we have is not great, but once you figure it out, we can make it happen. I could hook my JB4 up, I could throw this thing up, and we can make some power. I don't want to do that. I want to do this correctly so people know the struggles I went through and they can make this turbo happen and it's going to be a lot better for our community. And that's what I'm trying to do is make this better for our community so when you guys put this in your car, we know the struggles and we can help everybody out. And that's what I'm trying to help out with. That's why it's taking so long, because we want to do it right and not rush and, and just throw some numbers out there that are irrelevant. And we can at least have numbers with good, consistent power that we're not going to hit like torque limit tables and we're not going to hit our throttle closing and all that kind of stuff that we've all fought. All right. <clears throat> That's good. So I'm going to take you guys inside. We're going to look at his car. I mean, his car, he pretty much has like the Cork Sport catalog minus the turbo. You know, he couldn't wait that long, so he decided to do his own his own thing with the turbo. So, like I said, he is the first one with a big turbo on the fourth gens. So here's his car. Oh, I got it. So he had the JB4 hooked up, but like he said, he wants to do it right. You know, he just disconnected it. He wants to do it right and do it through the tuning software so you guys aren't just getting power in at wide open, wide open throttle and not partial throttle. They wanna make sure you got power all the time. Um, and one thing he was explaining to me about this turbo versus the other turbo that's coming out, they kept the runners. 
taking out the runners isn't necessarily good. So a lot of problems when people go big turbo is lag, right? So what those runners are for is when you're at low throttle input, it funnels that air to spool up the, the turbo a little bit better, right? So a lot of these big turbos are taking out the runners. You don't want to take out the runners because you're going to end up with more lag. And that takes the fun out of your car when you're doing your daily driving. And, you know, you're just going on the street and you're not going wide open throttle. Those runners keep you from having that lag off the line. If you take those runners out, now you have lag until the car builds up enough, you know, boost pressure. So the runners are essential. I'm not saying don't get another turbo, but if you can keep the runners, keep them. The turbo has no issue with making power with the runners in. The runners can be tuned. They work between zero and 3000 RPM. So that is the crossover for the runners. You can tune them however you need to, to get drivability back during your daily driving. So, but like I said, Lance has the BMS intake, which if you're gonna go big turbo, it's kind of necessary. Um, and I, you know, like the Cork Sport intake is great if you're on the stock, stock turbo, but as you get bigger, and, and that's one thing Terry said at Burger Motorsports, you know, he built for the future and the big turbo designs. Now, right now, the best downpipe on the market is the Cork Sport downpipe. And at the shop, they do recommend that you get the Cork Sport downpipe if you're gonna do the turbo upgrade. It'll make your installation a lot easier. So, and I mean, Lance can tell you about the installation what has to be done in order for the big turbos to work compared to the stock turbo? I mean, the installation on the big turbos, not too bad. It's like putting on the downpipe from Cork Sport. You gotta take the cow off. We just moved the downpipe out of the way, but if you have the stock turbo, you're gonna have to take it off and you're gonna spend more labor hours doing that. Mm -hmm. We're able to take the Cork Sport downpipe, just connect it top and bottom and slide it out of the way and the turbo came right out the top. Now, a couple things, you guys done the downpipe, the studs have been an issue. So studs in that downpipe were good, but the studs in the intake, I actually want them stripped out. So we had to retap a hole. I had to get all new studs for the intake side with the turbo. Um, and then with the pure turbo, you've got to change over your wastegate. And then there's another electronic piece. I believe it's the speed sensor for the turbine wheel. You just transfer over and then it bolts back on from there. But be prepared to rethread some holes in that intake. Like the robot at the factory just full sent mine cross thread, but we got it out, we got it fixed, and we're good to go. And I just put new gaskets, new studs in, and new new nuts, so we've been good since. Yeah, guys. So there's the car, still on a dyno. They don't have the final numbers, but like we said, it's gonna make over 300, no problem, right? So I mean, as you can see, he has everything. He has big brake kits, front and the rear along with their cork spark wing. So like I said, this is pretty much a cork spark car. Look at the steering wheel. You even got the carbon fiber steering wheel in here. So, car's nice. It's pretty much finished, you know. I, th I think, what else do you have left for the car? Um, you don't wanna tell them yet? No. Don't tell them yet, but you can kinda there'll hit There'll be that. something coming. I'm gonna test something here shortly. Um, just waiting for it to be built. And then I'm gonna put it on my car and the community will know once we get it on and how it fits, but there's going to be some cool coming out here from Speedy Room Motorsports. Yeah, and it'll be only it'll be exclusive to Speedy Room Motorsports, guys. So they have a new new part coming out, and if you want it, and if you're going to do a big turbo upgrade, even if you don't do a big turbo upgrade, and you're going to stick to the stock turbo, they got something coming, and it's going to be specially made here for Speedy Room Motorsports. So if you want it, you have to call them or order online with them. All right. So I don't know when they're getting the part, but it's pretty much already made, and they're going to start testing on it soon. So that's it guys, that's the car. I gotta still lance the spot on the dyno because I'm still working on my tune. But they will have some numbers, but like they said, they wanna do it right and not do, do it with JB4. They can easily get over 300 with JB4, but the plan is just to do it with tuning software. guys that's like that lowered life
saw in the video, um, Lance Lance's car is still on a dyno. Currently, as we speak right now, Mazda Monday, they're still um, going through the process because even myself, I've been able to see incredible results with JB4, JB4 combined with the tuning, but to do it by itself, um, just with the tuning and without the JB4 has been very difficult because we're still trying to find tables um, with the Mazda Edit software. Are the tables there? I 100% can't say for sure, but with the tables that are there, I have been able to get some dramatic results that uh, just JB4 alone, you won't be able to get. So JB4 is still a great tool. Um, Terry at Burger Motorsports created a great product. Um, and without that JB4, I don't think we would be as far along as we are in tuning using the Mazda Edit software. Um, so as you heard in the video, there is a new product that's only going to be at Speedy Room Motorsports, right? Um, they're the only ones with the pure turbo right now. I have a couple guys that I'm tuning that are getting the turbo. You know, I know you guys have been seeing the other turbo that's out. Well, not out yet. I don't know when it's going to be out. But, you know, not taking shots. There is a purpose for the runners. Mazda put them in there for a reason. Um, when they had they built this car and the motor, it was more for daily driving. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been in big turbo cars, but there is a lot of lag. The whole purpose of the, that exhaust runner is to be able to create enough pressure to spin that turbine up when you have low throttle input so the car feels more natural like an NA car and you know you get boost right off the line. So not taking shots, I get it. I get what they were trying to say about taking the runners out for top end power. But, um, but for us, fortunately, the top end power is not the real issue right now. It's the tuning software, right? Just figuring it out. There's plenty power left in that turbo. Uh, when I tuned that turbo with Mazda Edit and JB4, I had guys running 26 PSI, tapering to 23 PSI at 6,000 RPM. So there's plenty steam in the turbo, but is it efficient at that high boost? No. So turbo, small turbos are great for um, in-city driving and being fun. Um, big turbos, they're good for, you know, those straight line pulls, you know, when you want on the street and stuff like that, um, when you when you got spool, when you're in boost. But as far as big turbos, like daily driving, there is a lot of lag and it takes the fun out of it. I know a lot of guys, when they get big turbos, they kind of regret it because they lose that, you know, off the line uh, power they originally have that smaller turbo and all that torque. So keeping a runner in while having that, you know, the bigger turbines on this turbo it's still going to allow you to get that, you know, in-city, fun-spirited driving without having to wait for the turbo to spool up. So there's pros and cons to the to the runner. Like, yes, it could be inhibiting top-end power, but on a stock turbo, that higher boost level, it's just, it's just hot air at that point. So the Mazda knew what they were doing. They did it right. Not taking shots at Cork Sport. I'll say your name. But... I don't think it's going to be a big issue to have the runners in. Um, and as far as parts go, you know, I have no, I'm not biased. I go with whatever works best. Um, my next couple of videos, I just want to kind of go over for each platform for naturally aspirated, for superchargers and for turbochargers. What are the best parts? I'm not sponsored by anyone. So I'm not going to tell you something because I'm getting paid or anything. I'm going to tell you because it's the truth. And I don't care who's mad at me. All right. So like like I said, you know, I believe the Pure 500 is going to be the best turbo for all around, you know, city driving, um, pulls and everything, because it's just a well-balanced turbo. I originally wanted to get rid of the runners, but then as I thought about it with the bigger wheel and everything that they're having a runner still makes sense. You know, um, but we are there is issues right now with housings cracking, um, but. With the bigger turbo, we don't have to run as much boost and not much heat is gonna be generated. So those housings shouldn't be cracking like they were on some of the ones that we've seen so far. So that is the big benefit of the turbo is just running less boost pressure and getting the same power, less heat. So um, that's it for today, guys. Not gonna run my mouth right now, but you know, like, like I said, I do wanna go over parts that are good for each platform. Um, Right now, for the turbos, Cork Sport.
you know, uh, for at least the exhaust. So, you know, the, the 80 millimeter um, exhaust, it pairs up perfectly with that downpipe because the flange is um, 80 millimeters at the connector. The cork sport exhaust is the only thing that's really gonna pair it up with their cork sport downpipe. So if you are planning on getting a big turbo, it doesn't matter if you go pure 500 or, you know, the cork sport turbo, whenever that releases, that that downpipe is the best and only one that's going to be around and you know it is what it is they made the part that was you know best for it and that it is what it is same thing with this pure 500 turbo i don't see us needing that other turbo but if it, if it performs better cool but right now that's not our limitations the turbo is not the limitation is us figuring out these tables or finding them if they're even you know available because i mean right now mazda edit is still being updated like as we speak daily um, a lot of tables in there have been mislabeled and I mean for you know one person to figure that all out is going to take a while. I've been trying to study these tables for almost two years and I maybe understand a third of the tables that are there for the turbo. The turbo model has like you know two to three times as many tables as the naturally aspirated models. So and it's you know nobody wanted to risk their car. I'm not if I had the money disposable. I would try out every single table on these cars to see what it does, but I don't have that type of money to try a table that nobody knows what it does and blow up a motor. So that's it for today, guys. I just wanted to introduce you to Lance's car. Um, him and Dan are doing a great job figuring it out on their own. I'm just standing by just in case he gives me the opportunity, but I'll just wait for one of my customers to get the turbo. Um, but they're, they're pretty much, Dan has got it figured out and you know, once Lance gets back, hopefully he releases the numbers. You know, I saw some of the numbers behind the scenes and it's higher than any numbers that I've seen so far with the, the Fort Gens um, until maybe I get one of my guys on the dyno. So that's it for today, guys. We'll give you more information and that new part. I'm telling you, you're going to want it for your car, no matter if you're stock turbo or not. So that's it, guys. Talk to you later.